Okay, we are back. This is Tech Math 1. We are in the red book. We're on chapter 4. We're looking at 4.3 factor by grouping. And let's take a look what we're doing. So we have four terms. Uh, we're on 29. We have four terms. And what you do is you kind of split it up. It's, it's greatest common factor factoring once, twice, three times. That's how you do it every time. So look. A squared, A cubed, you pull out the greatest common factor for just those two first terms, just those two first terms. So it's A squared is the GCF for the first two terms. And so we put it down, we put an A squared under there, A squared under there, and then reduce it so we get A plus one. Then in the second two, we're going to factor out a negative two, a negative two. And the reason we have to pull a negative 2 is because we want this inside to match this inside. So negative 2a divided by negative 2, that's positive a. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is plus 1. And now check it out. You have an a plus 1 there, a binomial. An a plus 1 there, another binomial. And it's being multiplied by 2. It's being multiplied by a squared. And we can factor that out. Just how we factor the negative 2 out of those two, we can factor a binomial out. So we'll put that a plus 1 out front and then what's left inside there, well just what we did there where we wrote a squared a squared, there's one term, there's the second term, a plus 1 there, a plus 1 there, and check it out, boom boom, a squared, boom boom, minus 2. And we factored it. That's called factor by grouping. Okay. Let's do another problem. This is 29 part B. What can we factor out of the first two? That would be a 3x squared. Empty set of parentheses. And so we've got uh, 3 minus y. And then what can we pull out of the second two? Oh, wait, 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 3x squared. I might have taken that down wrong. Let me see. Yeah, that was 3x cubed. Got to make sure you write down the correct problem to begin with. So we divided by 3x squared, but there's a 3x there left. The factor, the greatest common factor was still 3x squared, but there was an x left. Now here, we're going to factor out um, negative y. And look at what we have left then. Positive 3x and minus y. And now we got 3x minus y and 3x minus y. We factor that out. Divide that by 3x minus y. Add that by 3x minus y. There's still an empty set parenthesis there. What goes in that empty set? Well, it's whatever's kind of left out front. Because these cancel, you get 3x squared. These cancel, you get minus y. And there we have it factored. That's called factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping. Let's look at two more factor by grouping problems. Um... It isn't always a negative. Those just both happen to be negatives that we had to pull out of here. Uh, look at this. AP minus AQ plus BP minus BQ. And then the second one they have CX plus 2DX minus CY minus 2DY. So this one we're going to have to do a negative, but this one we could just do a positive. All right, so what can we factor out of both of those, that would be an A, I think. I got pretty sloppy there. A, so A comes out, divide that by A, divide that by A, and we're left with P minus Q, plus, and now out of those two, we factor a B out, and so we're left with a P minus Q. And now we can do the P minus Q. And we're 
we're left with a plus b. Okay, so that is called factor by grouping. It's really just the greatest common factor factoring once, twice, three times. The third time is tough because you're doing a binomial. It's not normal. Normally when we look at it, it's a little weird to factor out a binomial out front. All right. So let's look at this one. We've got, um, oof, that's a D. Uh, we can factor out an X out of the first two. And we're left with C plus 2D. We can factor a negative Y out of the second two because look, they're both negative, but I need both of them inside to be positive. So I'll throw a negative on the Y. And a negative divided by negative is positive C. A negative divided by negative is plus 2D. And now look, this binomial is exactly the same as that one. So we factor that out, and then you're left with x minus y, right? Whatever's left there and whatever's left there. I'll show my work, though. Okay. Done. That's called factoring by grouping. Let's take a look at 4-4, four, four, factoring trinomials. And so let's work through a bunch of examples for you here on 4-4. Four, four. So number 33. So when you're factoring with a lead, leading coefficient, I always thought of it as like a mystery, like you're a detective. And so we'll make a list of suspects for each problem, and then we'll figure out who did it. All right. So look at 33. This is on 4.4. We got a bunch of factoring problems. We got y squared plus 15y plus 36. We got m squared minus 10m plus 16. And we got p squared minus 5p minus 14. And so each one of these I look at as a mystery. So 36. Let's make our list of suspects for 36. That is everything that multiplies to be positive 36, but we need it to add up to be positive 15. So multiplies to be this last number, but adds to be the middle number. So let's build our list of suspects. 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and I think that's everything. Three, oh, 6 times 6, of course. All right, so there's our whole list of suspects. That's everything that multiplies to be 36. Out of those, this one adds up to 37, so that isn't it. This one adds up to 20, so that isn't it. This adds up to 15, ring-a-ding-ding, -ding. we got it. That multiplies to be 36, but when you add 3 plus 12, that adds up to be 15. So now we can take this binomial, second degree, trinomial rather, and bust it into two first degree binomials. So we're factoring it apart, plus 3 and plus 12. It doesn't matter which one you put first or second. You can say plus 12 and plus 3. So y plus 3, y plus 12, and we're done. It's factored. What you've done is you've broken that down into its base pieces, into first degree pieces. Now look, if I multiply it back, remember the distributive property twice. You get y squared plus 12y plus 3y plus 36, and then 12y plus 3y is 15y. So I'd end up back with that. So how we put them together with multiplication, we're taking them apart with factoring. Adds up, or multiplies to be positive 16, but somehow adds up to be a negative 10. Well, now our suspect list is going to be kind of weird for 16, because it's got to be a negative times a negative. Negative 1, negative 16. Negative 2, negative 8. Negative 4, negative 4. Everything that multiplies to be 16, but could possibly add up to be a negative. So that's why they both had to be negative, negative. 
Whenever basically you have a minus and a plus, it's going to be both negatives like that. So who done it? Well, that adds up to negative 17, so that's off the hook. Oop, negative 10. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. M minus 2, M minus 8. Done. Factor. Negative 14. So now our list of suspects are for negative 14. But every one suspect you think of is actually 2. Because to multiply to be a negative, you need a negative and a positive. So negative 1 times 14, but then negative 14 times 1. Negative 2 times 7, but then also negative 7 times 2. Now, you've got to be very careful solving this mystery because negative 5p has to be this one, not that one. That adds up to 13, that adds up to negative 13, that adds up to positive 5. We want it to be negative 5, so it has to be this one. See, that's his twin brother. He wasn't even there that night. This one. p minus 7 and p plus 2. All right, and that's factory. Multiplies to be the last number, adds to be the middle number. Now, I've had students say, oh my gosh, I don't need any of this. I just looked at that and said, oh, that's 12 times three. That's negative eight times negative two. That's negative seven times positive two. If you can do it that quick where you can just figure out what they are and just write them down, that's fine. You don't have to show me this work. I'm showing this work and explaining it, so if you don't, if you're not a prodigy at factoring, you know how you can do it. You break it apart into everything that multiplies to be that number, and then see which one adds up to be the middle number. And that's how you factor. All right, most common error that I've seen in factoring is uh, when they factor, but um, they just grab anything. Like they say, m minus 4, m minus 4. Well, that doesn't, it multiplies to be 16, but it doesn't add up to be negative 10. So it's got to hit both. You have to tick both of those boxes. All right. Uh, let's take a look. 34, they just want me to tell you if it's correct or not correct. So let's see. Correct or incorrect? So we got... Um, x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals x minus 2, x minus 6. They say, at our t squared, oops, t squared minus 5, t minus 14 equals t minus 2 and t plus 7. So let's see if it works out. If I multiply this, x times x, x squared. Check. This one, negative 6x. This one, negative 2x. Negative 6 and negative 2 is negative 8. Check. And negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12. So this one is correct. t times t, t squared. Got it. Negative 2t, positive 7t. That adds up to 5t. Oh, this one's incorrect. because they've got the negative on the wrong thing. It should be, um, look, that adds up to positive 5t. It should be plus 2. It should be t plus 2 and t minus 7. And then you'd still get negative 14 at the end, but you'd get negative 5t. They mixed up the positive and the negative on that one. All right. Okay, so let's factor 35. There's a bunch of factoring problems. x squared plus 9x plus 20. y squared minus 3y minus 18. t squared minus 9t plus 8. And m squared plus 4m minus 12. So multiplies to be that, adds to be that. So think of things that multiply to be 20. 20 is 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. It's 4 and 5. That adds up to 9. So x plus 4, x plus 5. Multiplies to be a negative 18. So negative 18, list of suspects, negative 1 and 18, negative 18 and 1, negative 2 and 9, negative 9 and 2, negative 3 and 6, negative 6 and 3, I think that's everything that multiplies to be 18. So if you didn't think of those, let's say, oh my gosh, I didn't get those on my suspect list. 
look at 9. 9 has 3 times 3, right? And so you can look at other ones you already figured out, and if it goes into that number, it goes into the main number. So there's your 3 and 6. Um, so who done it? That's 17, that's negative 17, that's 7, that's negative 7, that's positive 3, that's negative 3. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Y minus 6, Y plus 3. Multiplies to be positive 8, but it's suspects that add up to be a negative, so it's got to be negative, negative. Negative 1, negative 8, negative 2, negative 4. Only two suspects for that one. Uh, this one did it. If you make your whole list of suspects and none of them add up to the middle, then we just say prime. Prime means it cannot be factored. Okay. And then the last one, negative 12. Lots of suspects for negative 12. Negative 1 and 12. Negative 12 and 1. Negative 2 and 6. Negative 6 and 2. Negative 4 and 3. Negative 3 and 4. Everything that is everything, all the whole numbers that multiply to be negative 12. Only one of them adds up to be 4. So negative 2 and 6, so m minus 2, m plus 6. And there we go. So that one was factored, that one was factored, that one was factored, that one was factored. Factoring fun. Multiplies to be the last number, adds up to be the middle number. Um, truth be told, factoring is one of the reasons I went into teaching mathematics. I, I liked these problems. Um, it was sort of like a puzzle, right? So you have to have the puzzle pieces fit. It multiplies to be the last number, but adds up to be the middle number. It is kind of hard to teach. I hope that you're getting this from this lecture. Um, I'm going to do a couple more examples here. Let's do 38. Where they have p squared, q squared, plus 11pq, plus 10. So multiplies to be 10, but adds up to be 11. So 1 and 10, or 2 and 5, those are the only suspects. It is 1 and 10. But now you might say, well, hold on, there's a q in it, like a pq. That's fine. Look, the first term is weird here. This is the same. So it's pq times pq, right? That's p squared q squared. And then it's still just plus 2 and plus 5, because check it out. 2pq, or I'm um, not 2 and 5. What did I do? It's 1 and 10. I circled 1 and 10, but I just wrote down 2 and 5. Don't do that. Ooh. 1 and 10. So look, 1pq plus 10pq, that's 11pq. So they're just being a little difficult by throwing another variable in there, hoping to screw you up. So same dog, different fleas. We're still just going to focus on the negative 14. Everything that multiplies to be negative 14, negative 1 and 14, negative 14 and 1, negative 2 and 7, negative 7 and 2. That's everything that multiplies to be negative 14. Only one of them adds up to be negative 5. So we have mv minus 7 and mv plus 2. All right. And then let's do two more. Number 40, I mean two more problems, just number 40. Uh, so what do we have here? y cubed, oh look, it's a mixed basket. Minus y squared minus 12y. So now you have to bust out your sweet greatest common factor factoring skills. Factor out the y. And remember how we do that, and then underneath each term. And so now look, we've got a second degree now, y squared minus 1y uh, minus 12. So you're thinking of things that multiply to be negative 12. Oh, crud, I had negative 12, I erased it. Sometimes you can look back at your other work if you have that number ready for the suspect list. Negative 1 and 12, negative 12 and 1, negative 2 and 6, negative 6 and 2, negative 3 and 4, negative 4 and 3. Out of all of those, only this one adds up to be negative 1. That's positive 1, that's negative 4, that's positive 4, that's negative 11, that's positive 11. So here is my answer, y minus 4, y plus 3. And then one last problem. We'll put it over. We'll just write it above it. 
Okay, so number 40, part two. Okay, it's really the same thing. T cubed plus 14T squared plus 48T. So this is number 40, part B. Again, we're going to factor out a T. And then we're going to have T squared plus 14T plus 48. Oh boy, so things that multiply to be 48, we got uh, 1 and 48, we got 2 and 24, and then just like off of that, so if you're not that great at it, look, um, you know for sure 6 will go into it, 6 and 8, um, 3 will go into it, right, 3 and uh, 1... 18, 16, and then 4 will go into it, 4 and 12. So let's see which ones, oh, 6 and 8. So that might, you might not have even had to do this. You might have thought, that might have been the first thing that popped into your head when you saw 48. You might have thought, hmm, 6 and 8. And so if you can just do it without doing the list of suspects, that's fine. T plus 6, T plus 8. And there we go, factored form. All right. Awesome. And there's still a bunch of different kinds of factoring, factoring and reducing. Ooh, chapter four is a long chapter. <laughs>